4.44, situation A. Player A1 attempts to catch the ball while running rapidly. A1 muffs the ball, but succeeds in securing it before it strikes the floor. A1 then begins a dribble. There has been no violation provided that A1, after catching the ball, released the ball to start his dribble prior to the pivot foot being lifted from the floor. The critical thing to note in this situation is that the ball is not considered caught until the player actually has control of the ball. An attempt to catch the ball is not a catch until it is clearly successful. No traveling can occur if there is not player control. 4.44 Situation B Player A1 attempts a try after ending the dribble. The try does not touch the backboard, the rim, or any other player. A1 runs and is able to catch the ball before it strikes the floor. In this case, there has been no violation. When A1 recovered his own try, he could begin a dribble, make a pass, or try again. This is often miscalled as a pass to self, but as long as it is an actual try for goal, there is no violation. The official has to judge whether the try was legitimate or an attempt by the player to gain an advantage by passing the ball to himself. 4.44.2 Situation A A1 catches the ball with one foot touching the floor, then jumps off that foot and alights on both feet simultaneously. A with both feet parallel or B with one foot in advance. In this situation, the position of the feet has no significance, but they must come to the floor simultaneously. In both A and B, it is a violation if A1 pivots on either foot. 4.44.2 Situation B Airborne players A1 and A2 jointly grab the rebound and each alight simultaneously on both feet. A1 and A2 each move one foot in attempting to wrestle the ball away from the other before realizing that they are teammates. A1 lets go and A2 dribbles away. This is legal. There has been no violation as neither A1 nor A2 moved their pivot foot while they were in joint control of the ball. 4.44.3 Situation A, A and B A1 jumps to try for goal. B1 also jumps and A slaps the ball out of A1's hands or B touches the ball but does not prevent A1 from releasing it. In both of these cases there is no violation and the ball simply remains alive. B1's contact with the ball did not prevent the pass or try so the ball remains alive and subsequent action is covered by the rules that apply to the situation. 4.44.3 Situation A, C and D A1 jumps to try for goal. B1 also jumps and touches the ball and A1 returns to the floor holding the ball or touches the ball and A1 drops it to the floor and then becomes the first to touch it after it bounces. Both of these cases are traveling violations. In the first case, A1 is called for traveling for returning to the floor while holding the ball, and in the second case, A1 is called for traveling for lifting the pivot foot before starting a dribble. Remember, since B1's contact with the ball did not prevent the pass or try, the ball remains alive and subsequent action is covered by the rules that apply to the situation. 4.44.3 Situation B A1 jumps off both feet in an attempt to try for goal, but realizing that the shot may be blocked, he drops the ball to the floor and dribbles. This is illegal. A1 has traveled, as one foot must be considered the pivot and must be on the floor when the ball is released to start the dribble. The fact that no pivot foot has been established does not alter this ruling. 4.44.3 Situation C A1 establishes one foot as a pivot. 
While faking a pass or try, A1 lifts the pivot and stands on the other foot alone while undecided as to what to do. This is legal. Traveling would occur only if A1 begins a dribble or returns the pivot foot to the floor. While in this position, A1 may pass, try for goal, or call a timeout. 4.44.3 Situation D A1 throws the ball over the head of B1 and then takes several steps before catching the ball before it touches the floor. This is illegal since the ball did not touch the floor before it was caught. It is the same as lifting the pivot foot before starting a dribble. 4.44.5 Situation A Player A1 falls to the floor, A while holding the ball, or B after being airborne to catch a pass or control a rebound. In both cases, this is a traveling violation. By definition, falling to the floor while holding the ball is traveling. 4.44.5 Situation B A1 dives for a loose ball and slides after gaining control. A1 is in a position either on his back or his stomach. This is legal. The player may pass, shoot, start a dribble, or call a timeout. The direction of the slide by itself does not constitute an advantage. Simply sliding toward a player's own basket is not enough to create an advantage. The advantage is determined by what the player does while sliding. Once A1 has the ball and is no longer sliding, he may not roll over. If he's flat on his back, he may sit up without violating. But any attempt to get up is traveling unless A1 is dribbling. It is also traveling if A1 puts the ball on the floor, lets go of it, rises, and then is first to touch the ball. 4.44.5, Situation C. Player A1 is dribbling when he a. Drops to a position with a knee on the floor and then ends the dribble, or B. Drops one knee to the floor and then stands again while continuing the dribble. In both situations, these actions are legal while dribbling. However, if A1 touches a knee to the floor while holding the ball, it would be traveling as A1 has touched the floor with something other than a hand or foot. 